So we are going to talk about the gradient theorem, which is also called the fundamental theorem of calculus for line integrals, because it's a very important concept in vector calculus. To understand the gradient theorem, we're going to take a look at this derivative. In this case, we're looking at a scalar valued function f, which takes in some point or vector and outputs a single number, a numerical value. And inside of that function, we're inputting some parametrization r of t that represents the movement along a particular curve in space. So we want the derivative of f of r of t with respect to that input variable t. Now this derivative is talking about the rate of change of f with respect to t. So we have to start by looking at what happens when t changes. As we change the value of t, what's actually happening is we're going to move along the curve represented by r of t. We're going to move in this direction. And one way that we can represent that is with a directional derivative. I have another video on directional derivatives. You can check the link in the description for that. The first thing we need to do to calculate a directional derivative is figure out in what direction are we moving. We know that we're moving along the path of r of t. But at a particular point, what vector represents the direction that we are moving at that specific point? Well, the way that we represent movement along the curve, the way that the output of a curve is changing, is with the derivative. So this vector we can represent as r prime of t, the derivative with respect to t of r of t. So if we want the derivative in the direction of this curve, we're going to take the directional derivative in the direction of r prime. Now, if we want the derivative of f with respect to t, this directional derivative is only half the story, because this is telling us how f changes when we move in the direction of r prime. But we also have to ask, how far are we moving in the first place? That's going to be described by the magnitude of r prime of t. r prime of t represents how the space curve changes with respect to t. So that magnitude is how much we're moving along the curve. Now we can just expand out this directional derivative. The directional derivative is equal to the gradient vector of f dotted with the unit vector in the direction of r prime, which means we just take r prime of t and divide by the magnitude to make it a unit vector. And then we multiply by the magnitude of r prime of t. And you'll notice we have the magnitude of r prime of t in the numerator and the denominator. Those are going to cancel out. And the result that we get is the gradient vector f dotted with r prime of t. This is telling us the derivative of f of r of t with respect to t. Now the gradient theorem has to do with line integrals over vector fields. And in order to understand how that relates to the derivative we just calculated, remember that the gradient is itself a vector field. The gradient gives us a vector of partial derivatives of this function f. We might have df dx and then df dy. That means that when we calculate the gradient at a particular point, we're inputting a point or a vector and we're getting a vector out. And that's what a vector field does. So the gradient theorem makes a statement about the vector field line integral when our vector field is a gradient function. So we have the gradient of f dotted with dr. In this case, we know that we can expand dr so that we get the gradient of f dotted with r prime of t times dt. What we have right here on the inside, the gradient of f dotted with r prime of t, that is the derivative of f of r of t with respect to t. So this integral, the gradient of f dot dr, that's equal to the line integral of d dt of f of r of t. But then we integrate with respect to t. And we know what is the integral of a derivative. That just gives us the original function back. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, if we're looking at a parametrization r of t that goes between two points, t1 and t2, the integral of a derivative is going to give us the original function, 
So we're going to get f of r of t evaluated at t2 and t1. These values t2 and t1 just represent the start and the end of our curve C because those are the endpoints of our parametrization. And so we can say that this is equal to f of the endpoint or the end vector minus f of the start point. So the gradient theorem tells us that when we take the vector field line integral and our vector field is a gradient, we can just evaluate the start and end points and that will give us our result. So now that we have this statement of the gradient theorem, we're going to go through a few variations of one example. Find the integral over c of the gradient of f dotted with dr, where f of xy is equal to x squared times y plus 2e to the x, and c is the line segment from 1, 0 to 0, 1. Again, when we're doing a vector field line integral, we can start by looking at what our curve C represents. We have the point 1, 0 over here and the point 0, 1. And we are looking at a curve that goes in this direction. So 1, 0 is the start point and 0, 1 is the end point. However, in this case, we don't actually have to find R of t, some function that represents this curve. And that's because we're taking the line integral of a gradient function. And we know that when we do that, we just have to evaluate the function at the end point minus f at the start point. So in this case, we can go straight to plugging in values. The integral over c of the gradient of f dotted with dr is going to equal f at the point 0, 1, which is our end point, minus f at the start point, which is 1, 0. Plugging these values 0 and 1 into our function and simplifying is going to get us to our answer of 2 times 1 minus e. So that's the result, and we don't even have to find r of t because we can just plug in the start and the end points thanks to the gradient theorem. Now the next variation on this example is what if instead of looking at the line segment from 1, 0 to 0, 1, we looked at the arc of a unit circle like this, that connected the same two points. So our path is different, but our start and end points are the same. Well, here's the thing. If we're still looking at the same function f of x, y, and we're taking the integral of the gradient, the gradient theorem tells us that the only things that matter are the end point and the start point. So no matter what the curve is in the middle, we're going to get the same result of 2 times 1 minus e for any curve that connects those two points. Because of that, when a vector field is the gradient of some function, we say that it is path independent, which means that no matter what path we choose between two points, the vector field line integral is going to give us the same value. The last example I'll give is what if our curve C is a circle that goes all the way around it connects the point 1, 0 to 1, 0, but it goes in a big circle. Well, the gradient theorem says that's going to be f of the end point minus f of the start point. But if the end and start point are the same, this is going to give us 0. So when a vector field is the gradient of some function, any line integral that is over a curve with the same start and end point is equal to 0. That idea is important enough that we give it a specific name. We call this a closed curve. And when we're looking at a simple closed curve, we denote the line integral over that curve C with a circle in the middle of that integral sign. So if you're ever looking at a line integral over some curve C and you see that circle in the integral sign, what that means is that the line integral is over a closed curve. So those are some of the fundamentals to the gradient theorem. The gradient theorem is really talking about the derivative of some function f of r of t and how that relates to the directional derivative, which is a dot product. If we take the line integral over c of the gradient of f dotted dr, that just means we have to take f at the end point and subtract f at the start point. 
That means that when we're looking at a vector field that is a gradient, a line integral is path independent as long as the start and end point are the same. And over a closed curve, the line integral with a gradient function is just going to give us 0.